No, it's, it's just an example. This Republican Party is a very big tent. Everyone's invited in. That was House Mi Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy last February defending one of his then closest allies, Congresswoman Liz Cheney. Since then, their relationship has soured after she was ousted from her leadership post and became her party's leading anti-Trump voice. And on Thursday, McCarthy twisted the knife, endorsing her primary challenger. Wyoming deserves to have a representative who will de deliver the accountability against this Biden administration, not a representative that they have today that works closer with Nancy Pelosi going after Republicans instead of stopping these radical Democrats for what they're doing to this country. It's um, funny because Liz Cheney was standing right next to him in that first clip. Um, as he said, it's a big tent. Mm -hmm. And now she's under the bus. What is he trying to say uh, to the world, frankly, about where, you know, the politics of the Republican Party stand? Well, listen, everything Kevin McCarthy does between now and November should be viewed through the lens of the speakership. That is mm -hmm. all he cares about, winning the majority and becoming speaker. And he was under a lot of pressure from his right flank to take some sort of action against Liz Cheney. He rejected calls to kick her out of conference. And so he is settled on this strategy, trying to boot her out of conference. And yes, it's extraordinary. Yes, it's really rare. Um, some of the establishment members in the Republican Congress don't want to see him take this step. But he knew that this is what he needed to do politically, and he's already getting some praise from it. Donald Trump put out a statement on Friday praising him and Elise Stefanik for going this route. This is about Trump at the end of the day. And uh, in, an, in other races, like, for example, in Georgia, Trump has created this Republican civil war in that race basically because he is in a, um, a grudge match with uh, Governor Kemp for not endorsing the election stealing lies. And it's causing a lot of Republicans to just be really confused. Here's one Republican operative who says, a lot of Republicans don't understand why you would challenge an incumbent Republican governor. It's very obvious former President Trump has an issue with that governor, but that's not really a compelling reason. It's right. not. <laughs> right. Well, for voters, right, yeah. you have to give them a reason to do this. And there are a certain segment of Republicans who do believe that going against President Trump is enough of a reason to oust them from their job. But the most recent polling that's come out in Georgia has Purdue, uh, Purdue, who was the challenger, trailing Governor Kemp by about 10 points. So right now, Purdue, who remember, he lost his reelection uh, in Georgia. To the Senate. To, to, and, to and, the now Senate. and now we have a Democratic Senate. And now he's trying Senate. to come back. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's always hard to try to come back after losing, especially yeah. when your loss meant a Democratic Senate. But the other thing, I talked to a Republican uh, operative the other day who said, look, the, the endorsement by Trump is still super important, okay? It's something that you do want as a Republican in a primary. At the same time, you still have to run a good campaign. You still have to be a good candidate. And if you don't have the endorsement, you can still find a way to win these things. There are examples where it's happened. So you still have to, we go back to basics all the time, but you still have to run a campaign. And I think many of these candidates thought, I got the Trump endorsement. What do I need to worry about? Yeah. Everything's going to come flowing to me. Money, love, votes. It doesn't work that way. It's a lot more complicated than that. And in Missouri, another example, right. a, a Trumpy candidate who has Trump aides working for him, Eric Greitens, who has a very checkered past, wants that Trump endorsement so badly. But our latest reporting is that Trump is holding back because maybe he doesn't want to back a loser at the end of the day. And... and uh, the chair of the NRSC, the National Republican Senatorial Committee, uh, Rick Scott, says, my goal for Trump, uh, and for and not just him, for Republicans, is to endorse people who can win a general election. So they, there's a real risk here that Greitens could not win, but Trump may very well endorse him. Uh, he may, but, uh, you know, we also see that you, you kind of giggled when you said that he doesn't want to back a loser. This is something that's very important for Trump, uh, for his own reputation and legacy. I mean, it's sort of personal. It's not about, you know, the party at the end of the day for him. But he takes these things very seriously. And so with, with the case of uh, Georgia, it was interesting because you had these grudge wars kind of taking place where, um, you know, the, the, the former president was trying to kind of push these grudge wars. Um, you know, bigger picture, Missouri is a little bit of a different scenario. But at the end of the day, he's also sort of trying to support his underlying arguments with this notion that the uh, 2020 election was illegitimate, that he was sort of duped out of this, uh, out of winning the race. And that seems to be waning with a lot of his supporters as well. And so at the end of the day, if President Trump is not going to get into substantive issues and is going to base a lot of his endorsements mainly on grudge issues and on that 
that the, the illegitimate claim yeah. about the election, it, it, it doesn't seem to be well, taking effect. Yeah. I, I do want to, speaking of the big lie, I mean, there's one place where it's not waning, and that is Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, Republicans are trying to uh, really do have a redo and undo the results of the 2020 election. And this is the headline from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Wisconsin Republicans seek to jail more officials as part of their review of the 2020 presidential election. They want to put Democrats in jail for not participating in uh, this fantasy that Trump won the 2020 election. Yeah, that's deeply troubling, right? I mean, I don't think that's profound for me to say, <laughs> but when you're talking about jailing yeah. election officials, and I haven't read the article or seen the sourcing and the reporting, but that is that is deeply troubling. And you look at sort of the changes that are taking place, the big issue when you talk to sort of even Republicans on this is what's happening at these Secretary of State races. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, we, we have a lot of ancillary conversations. The big issue is you have certified election results that are overturned by an election official and does that then get sent to Washington? Yeah. And that's the big issue. And that's right. like everything else exactly. pales in comparison. No, I, I think no matter what Republicans in Washington want, it is still true that many Republican uh, local parties are organizing themselves around this principle of that lie led by Trump. That's not going away anytime soon.